This is going to seem a rather relaxed and laid back video, but what I'm actually doing is um, this is towards the end, and I come down here to just try and catch the last bits of light. The light has been brilliant though, it's been really, really good, and I've really enjoyed coming down. I've been sitting around, honestly, in the same location for about an hour now, and what I'm going to do, what the video is going to be, is the video is going to be time blending because I've been shooting for over an hour uh, I've been lying around for about an hour but I've been shooting for over an hour and it's going to be a time blending video and I'm just going to show you how to put blends together and what ones I've chosen and what ones I've done during the week it's been work, work, work and great skies during the week but I've not managed to get down to shoot them uh, so tonight I've actually managed it the sky has not been as good as it was but at the same time, it's been brilliant. It's been brilliant for what I'm doing just now. And I'm still shooting. Uh, sun's set now, but I'm still shooting because I'm going to blend quite a few of these together. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. For this one, is the simplest form of time blending. It's the same location for, in this case, just over an hour, a series of shots that are bracketed. What I did was I took the bracketed shots and it is focus stacked as well. So I had to create the different single images of the HDR bracketed images. And that's done through by selecting the images in Lightroom and then merging them. When I turn on the auto settings, that's just to make sure it works. And for some of them, as you may notice, it doesn't work, but others it does. So I thought I'd speed up the process just to save you the time here. Next thing is beginning to look at the sky to find out what one of the skies that I want to use over this period of time. And again, I'm looking for certain details that perhaps will match the earlier images when the light was on the rocks and on the side of the cliff face, if you want to call it that as well. And the, the light illuminated the grass as well and it also illuminated all the surrounding. Once I've chosen the skies, I then blend all them together in the HDR format, which is just photo merge in Lightroom. From here, I'll, I'll still go back in and I'll check just to make sure everything's sharp, but I've picked each one as a flag, or flag is pick, as it is in Lightroom, and I have them ready now to open in Photoshop, so I just check that everything's okay and it's the way I want it, just to save the process later. And then what I do is I select each one, just have a quick look over it and then select them all and then right click and open as layers in Photoshop. Once they're in Photoshop, they're already selected. So I just press Control and J and copy them up so that I have a safety copy, but it's also so that I can use them later. I then open them all up and select them all and from here, I go into Edit, Auto Align Layers. Now this process takes a little while because it's auto aligning everything. But once they are aligned, it means I can close down the group that I've created and then go in and choose which ones I'm going to use. And although they are different ones here, I'm looking for the three bracketed ones that are the foreground and mid-ground and the rocks in the distance. And once I'm happy that I've got them and everything's okay with them, what I do is I go up to Edit, Auto Blend Layers. At this point, you want to check everything. You want to zoom right in and check that there is no anomalies within the image. Uh, looking to test, test everything sharp and that you're very happy with what's left. Again, no cropping done as yet, but I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to look at different areas. I wouldn't crop here, to be honest, but that's my preference with this. And I'm now looking just to see about the skies. 
uh, to see what sky I want to use. But if you remember, I created a group earlier and the group included some of the skies that I wanted to use. And it's just a copy of the layers that are already there. So it's now just to go and check to see what sky would I like to use out of these. And that's me using different times and different blends throughout the hour and a half that I was actually shooting. And that's what you're aiming for. You're looking to see what sky is going to suit best your blends. This image, uh, for me, the best sky is the second top one. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a hide all layer by holding down control when I press the layer. I'm then going to go in and use a gradient blend. And it's a white reveal all gradient blend. I take that down through the image and down onto the water slightly. Uh, and this will allow me to see how much of a blend and how it's going to affect the image overall. If I'm happy with it, I'll zoom in and just check that everything's okay. And just in case I've missed any anomalies, and there is in fact some anomalies within this, and it's just softer areas within the image where Photoshop has not picked up the blends, and you can see them there. So I'm just checking over the entire image. This is where the extra set of layers that you copied comes in useful. And they are down in the group below. This is where you want to select the best layer that's going to be the sharpest for any of the areas or multiple layers for any of the areas that are out of focus and that Photoshop has not uh, blended correctly. And once you find that layer, what I'll do is I'll mark it in red or one of the other labels and I'll move it to the top of the image. That way I know it's there. Again, I'll create a hide all layer and using the brush I'll go in and I'll paint over all the areas that I know that it hasn't blended properly. The brush settings are entirely up to you, but I find that if I work quite soft with this, as in the opacity turn down and the flow turn down, it yields better results. And then it's just taking your time, checking over the entire image and painting through. I'll then check for any and other anomalies within the image and I'll clean them up as well before saving the document and sending it back to Lightroom. It's at this point that I usually check to see what kind of crop I'm after for this. But first of all, I need to check that the horizon is level. And once I've got that level, I'll go in and I'll check a crop just to see what I think is going to best suit this, whether it's going to be a 16 by 9, whether it's going to be 2 by 3, 8 by 10. And I'll just move it around until I'm actually quite happy with the image. And each time I'm watching the navigator up in the top corner just to see what the final image will look like for this. This is the main part of the process, everything you've seen up until now. This is you building your entire blends up before you actually start to edit the image. The entire edit for this was 53 minutes long, so you can imagine the time it's going to take. From here, I go into Luminar AI, because that's my preference for a couple of edits that I use. And in Luminar AI, I have a preset that I've already set up that I use for most of my images. And once I've applied that, it goes back into Lightroom. From here, I'll tweak the image again, just to see how I want the balance of and the tones and the colours to be. And it's playing around with the image, just checking everything's there, sharpening the image, holding down Alt while moving the mask, and just looking at the image overall to see if it gives me what I need. Now that most of the global edits are done, I'm looking at using radial filters to go into more local editing. And with the range mask tool, I'll go in and choose the luminance just to brighten up these areas, just to see how they are going to affect the image. You'll get better results if you use local editing than what you will global editing. So it's just now changing it slightly, making small tweaks here and there to get the style that you are after for your image. Once I've done these, I duplicate these. Again, simply because it's easier, I don't have to set anything up, but it's also allowing me to, the 
range mask is already set, so I know it's picking up the highlights. And if I need to adjust it slightly, I can. So I'll place these around the image however best I think it's going to suit just to finish the entire image off. But at this point, we are still not finished the edit. A couple more things left to do for this. The sky, I want to warm up the sky slightly and I also want to add some magenta to the sky and because I think it will complement the areas that are there and it will complement the entire image. And again, this is done through using the luminosity masking in white room. Just around about there. From here, we're back into Photoshop and in this case, I'm going to use the Pro Panel. And the Pro Panel has an Norton effect in it and it's a really handy panel and I'll put a link below. And I'm going to use Orton Sharp for this one. And it is basically actions that create the Orton effect for you. Now, I'm shooting with a 46, 47 megapixel camera. So I try to take that down to around about that area, just where I can see the image, but it is blurry. Click OK. And then it opens up the levels and this will allow me to add more contrast or remove contrast to the image uh, just to balance it out for the next part of the process. And once I'm happy with that, again, I'll just I'll click OK in that and then I'll move on to the next part of the action. And this action for the next part is a high pass filter. Again, each image is different, so it's up to you what you're going to use for it. For me, dialing it back and moving it forward will allow me to see how much I'm actually going to use in this and to apply it. Once it's applied, that's then I can see the Orton effect. Now, the Orton effect is applied throughout the entire image, including the shadows. And you don't normally get an Orton effect in the shadows. So because it already creates a mask in this, I'll dial it back. I don't want too much of an Orton effect in this. So I'll dial it back a little bit and just check it just to, so that I can see the difference. Once I see the difference, I'll then go into the mask and I'll erase the areas that I don't want it to be in. Now, I'm basing this around the easiest method of doing this. If you use any panels like Lomenzi or that, you can actually select the lighter areas to do this. But I'm just going to show you from the point of view that Lomenzi isn't being used. So I'm going to paint out most of the dark areas where the light wouldn't cause the diffusion effect of the Orton effect. Some of the sky, I'm going to take it into some of the clouds because I felt that some of the clouds should have more dramatic effect in them. So it's just a couple of little areas in there. I've also noticed a couple of lens spots that I never noticed before and so I'm going into the layer below to clean them up. This is the most basic form of time blending and hopefully it lets you see how easily it can be done and just the considerations you have to take uh, when you're actually shooting your image. In this case, as you know, it was bracketed and focus stacked to get the final image. If you stuck around to the end, I really appreciate you watching the videos and hopefully you've got something from them. Thanks again for watching and as I'm lying here, yep. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'm going to sign out now. I'll see you in the next video.